All right, welcome to Connecting Community Initiative Committee meeting, September 16th, 2024, and it is 6.35 p.m. And Lily, would you read the prelude? Well, I'd be delighted. I, I would like to share with you all that certain meetings normally held at municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with House Bill Number 58, the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, whoops, I think went wild, um, Section 20 until March 31st, 2025. Great. Thanks, Lily. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. Members, Jim Cambius. Yes. Hi. Jim is here. Julie Chalfont. Oh, Julie's there. Great. Lily's here. There. Tim Hilchi. Uh, I don't see Tim yet. Um, Andrew Leapson here. I'm here. Christopher Dunn here. Emma's here. Pete Law's here. Mark Brand is here. We're just missing Tim. Maybe someone could text him and remind him. And guest Blake Gilmore. All right, great. Okay. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from August 15th? And if so, any additions, corrections? And if not, do I hear a motion? I I move that we accept the minutes of August 15th, 2024. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. If there are no objections, then We'll accept the minutes. Okay, all set. All right, so I'm gonna start off with committee updates report and I'm gonna have Christopher Dunn, please go first. What's what's happening, Christopher? Anything? <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing too much, not a lot going on. Uh, let me pull up my list of projects here. Um, all right, first on my list, not to step on Jim's toes, but uh, Tilton Library, Quick update, we submitted uh, an Amelia Peabody grant application last week. It's just $100,000. It's to help out with the capital campaign of uh, the expansion. Uh, and then the next step is gonna be working with Candace on a possible uh, Mass Cultural Council uh, facilities fund grant. So that would be at some point this fall when they actually release their guidelines. So that's, that's what's going on on my end with the library. Uh, 1888, I don't see Tim on here, so just quick update. We had a, a lovely public meeting on Thursday evening, and uh, I know a lot of you showed up, so thank you for attending. Uh, Hugh and Riddle, our architects from Amherst, presented their initial concepts, and we had a, a great Q&A and discussion with the audience. Um, so they'll, they'll come back maybe with some changes to some paint colors, <laughs> since that seemed to be the main, the main sticking point. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have another one of those meetings Tuesday, I think it's a Tuesday. I'll have to double check which day it is, but it's October 1st. Good. And so they'll they'll be back again to share some updates and then uh, you know, kind of close the loop before we go to special town meeting on October 7th to ask for um, you know, ratification of the CPC's unanimous recommendation to award 3.8 million from the community preservation funds uh, to that project. So let me know if you have any questions on that one. Obviously, a very big, exciting project there. Christopher, at the same time, doors open 6.30 and then 7 o'clock? That, that's the plan for the moment. Uh, we're going to have a committee meeting on Friday and and uh, kind of finalize those details. So we'll okay. send out a Great, notification after that. Uh, Larry Lott, things are proceeding apace. Um, so they're at the stage where they're just trying to figure out um, exactly the, the proper positioning for the um, pads for the um, EV chargers. Um, the chargers are on their way. It seems like we're going to get them in late fall. So, you know, they're trying to get them installed prior to winter, but everything's going well with that project so far. And if you haven't stopped by, I encourage you to, you know, peek through the fencing and take a look. It's kind of, kind of amazing how much has happened over there already. So um, that continues to move forward. Uh, Elm Street Complete Streets. Um, so again, this is an effort. This is we have a Complete Streets plan that's kind of sat on the shelf for a few years. Complete Streets, as a reminder to everyone, is just uh, you know making sure your your roads and sidewalks can accommodate not only vehicles but bicyclists and pedestrians as well, and people with mobility issues. Um, 
So I've been working with Ty and Bond to come up with a conceptual design for the section of Elm Street between Railroad and Main Street. Um, so they came back with a couple different options and we're gonna be presenting them at a public meeting or, or I really should say an open house next week on Tuesday. Um, so I encourage everyone to attend, take a look at the designs, give us some feedback. Um, and that's gonna be in preparation for an actual Complete Streets grant application um, in early October. Um, hopefully that, you know, the, those Complete Streets grants can cover up to $500,000. Um, so potentially that'll cover 100% of construction um, and the town has already partially funded design through an appropriation at town meeting a few years ago. So in good shape good on that one. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I do have a question about that. So it's from four to seven. So is there going to be a presentation or just you're going to be there to answer questions, take a look? I'm going to be, or... uh, I'm going to be there to answer questions. Amy will be on hand as well, I believe. Um, we're going to have uh, up on the screen a couple different uh, you know versions of the concepts and some FAQs. But it's really just a stop in at your leisure, take a look, give us your feedback and you know head home for dinner or or dessert or whatever. So uh, that's that's the idea for Tuesday. Thanks. Uh, so Bloody Brook and Sugarloaf Brook. So just a reminder, we got um, an MVP action grant to do a hydraulic and hydrologic study of the Bloody Brook. Try and figure out exactly how that watershed works and where we need to make updates to our culverts or, you know, our pavements or or any of our surrounding public infrastructure that might be contributing to inland flooding. Um, we also have a seed project grant from MVP, um, and that's going to fund basically a similar project on Sugarloaf Brook, which I think probably fewer people know where that is. It's kind of hidden because it's so buried under, you know, various bridges and roads and things. Um, but it's essentially on the other side of Main Street. Um, so you can see it kind of running under, uh, oh, near Fisher's Garage and um, the cemetery over there. So there's a few spots where it's kind of visible. Um, so that project, we're still just working out the scope with the uh, consultant, but I, I think we're going to be under contract by the end of the month. Um, so encourage everyone to keep an eye out. We're going to have at some point a couple of public information sessions, and then there's also going to be specifically a workshop for seniors. Uh, so Jen Remillard from the Senior Center is going to be helping us out with that. So keep an eye out. I hope you guys can't hear the screaming children in the background right now, but... <laughs> Um, they're okay. Uh, let's see what else I got. Oh, senior center feasibility study. Um, no, no real updates yet. Uh, we have a meeting coming up on Wednesday. Um, so they're getting closer, I think, to kind of narrowing down the options available for a senior center. They had been looking at, um, you know, the, the 1821 church, uh, the Oxford University Press Building in Sunderland, and then also kind of a, a more recent ad was the Waitley Town Hall or town offices um, near their industrial park. Um, so should have more updates on that project soon, but none really at the moment. Um, and then uh, network geothermal, uh, really quick. So that um, that project is funded by a $50,000 heat grant that Tim got. Um, they, I actually just got to touch base with them last week. So they have, um, you know, preliminary feasibility study results. Um, they believe they're going to be able to present that, um, at some point soon to the energy committee and the MVP core group. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and then beyond that, I think, I think that's it for my list for the moment. Shared, the shared streets project is concluded. So the, I don't know if everyone got to see the beacons and crosswalks go up in front of uh, the schools. Um, I think the beacons were having a little issue and the, the contractor came back and fixed it, so they should be working now. Uh, and then senior housing, Lily, I'm, I'm sure you'll pr provide an update, so I'll, I'll stop there. But that was a lot. So any questions from anyone on any of those projects? Julie? Um, for the Senior Center Feasibility Study, um, was it ever mentioned the possibility of putting them in the town hall if we do the, the current town hall, if we do the 1888 building project? Yeah, so I've I've talked to Chris Wanty, who is uh, the project manager for EDM Studio, the consultant on the project, and I kind of walked him through, 
you know, here's the potential series of dominoes that could fall, uh, yeah. you know, with this municipal campus. So he's aware of that. Um, I know they're definitely um, interested in, you know, just vacant space that they could build new on. We've kind of communicated, well, there isn't a lot of that. <laughs> so right. we're likely, we're likely going to be looking at some kind of, um, you know, adaptive reuse or of some kind. Um, so he, he's aware of that. Um, but I think it's, it's good to know maybe to remind him, Hey, that's, that's another possibility because, you know, Deerfield, uh, South Deerfield really makes sense geographically and it's just finding the right space here. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's a good point to convey to him again. All right. Another Jim? Question? question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I just, uh, had a question. Um, I must have missed the the memo. Why has the Congregational Church, which we specifically bought to use as a senior center, now off the list for potential senior center venues? Oh no, it's it's not off the list. So I referred to it as the 1821 building. That's the same same uh, building. Well, yeah. I think you, you may have misspoke. I think maybe you said 1888 then. Oh, oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, 1821. One of those 18 buildings. All right. Yeah, the, the South Congregational Church remains on the list. Yep. Okay, good. All right, and and just a reminder, we didn't buy that building. We were given that dollar. building for $1. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, $1. It was, that was the ostensible purpose of acquiring it at all. Yep. Okay. It's like Tim's yeah, got a question. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say the same thing that uh, we bought it for a dollar. Okay. Emma, you have a question? Uh, yes, I just want to know what type, I mean, do all of those buildings re, uh, meet their size requirements or is, do they have size requirements? Sort of, you know, how big are they looking for? You know, what are they looking for? Well, yeah, so they, they went through a programming needs assessment. Um, you know, the, the sort of like dream size of the senior center was something like 30,000 square feet, which of course is just a no go. There's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then they went through, so then they went through an exercise of actually prioritizing the different space usage. Um, and that brought us to something between, I think the low side was 6,000 and the high side was like 14,000. Um, so it's somewhere in that area. Um, I think, you know, probably there are plenty of people who feel like, oh, it could probably be a little bit smaller than that even. Um, but that was what came out of the the kind of prioritization and space needs exercise that the consultant did um, with our board of oversight and our senior center director. Thanks. Yeah, Christopher, just, just to let you know that um, I went to a couple of meetings with this for the senior center and um, I think Jennifer had gone over and seen the senior center at Hadley as I had. I think Lily, you went to, didn't you? Yeah, we went over there, and that's that's ten thousand square feet. And originally, that's what Jennifer was looking for. So, yeah, I think fourteen thousand is is way too big because ten thousand was that was really big. I think six would pro six to eight would probably do it. But thanks. Yeah. Oh, Julie, do you have a question? I, I do still. Does it, do you know or does anybody know if the work on the relish on the um, old church building ever got done? Go ahead, I'm going to mention that. Oh, but... good. Okay. Okay. All right. Lily? Um, so one of the things I just wanted to ask Christopher was, in, in our conversations over the last couple of years, we've been stressing community slash senior center, as in not segregating older adults and um, also creating community space. Is that how they're thinking or is that news to you? No, that's definitely not news to me, Lily. Um, but thank you for the <laughs> I, reminder. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I spoke to, to M studio about that very point that you know really what when the town acquired it what they were interested in was not just a senior center but something that could be used more generally for the community obviously you kind of have to design with seniors in mind uh, based on parking and accessibility etc uh, but they're certainly not designing 
just for seniors. It's you know a space that could be used by all potentially. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for Christopher, Julie? I'll just throw a comment out there. I'm starting a new campaign to rename the church building to the South Deerfield Meeting House. Just throwing that idea out there. So, I love it. Because it sort of evokes the the religious character of it without being overtly religious, and it conveys the the community center sort of idea, and it makes it easier to figure out when, instead of saying 1888 and 1821. Yeah. So that's my new campaign. We'll see if it takes off. Great, Tim. So just following up on that, <clears throat> I was uh, very impressed the first time you mentioned it, Julie. And we've had lots of conversations about just calling it the meeting house because we all know that Deerfield is the center of the universe. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> I think it's a great idea. Yeah. No, we I, I love that. That's great. Okay. All right. So if no other questions for Christopher, how about we move on to um, Mark? Yeah, so um, CIPC met um, last week. We have um, new capital requests coming in. So there's the 1888 building and then also some uh, uh, air conditioner work for the elementary school. Um, so both of those are recommended and we'll present that as the capital plan. Um, after special town meeting, we'll start working on our five and 15 year plans. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all we've got going on right now. Thanks, Mark. Any questions for Mark? Emma? Yeah, um, the Energy Committee is putting in new, uh, we just got a grant for uh, building controls. And if if you're putting in uh, mini splits, uh, if there's a request to put in mini splits, we'd really like to coordinate with that because the mini splits right now are not being used for heat because they're not coordinated with the with the uh, building controls and that's a, a ridiculous waste of energy and so um it would be really good to talk to the energy committee um because we want to do the same thing for frontier and we you know our next grant will be well that's i'll get to that but um but it's it's important for these things to be coordinated yeah, so I think this is a, a multi-year project that's been underway for a while. So um, I, I would probably talk to the school about that. It's uh, yeah. their project, but it may be possible to retrofit those controls. No, the, it is. It is. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're planning on doing. And I just want to make sure that um, we, we are in touch with the school. So, And, that, and the request came from the school for yeah. more, more mm -hmm. mini splits. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. By the way, I'm in May. Hi, Mark. <laughs> this is you again. Yep. Okay. Any other questions for Mark on that? No? All right. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. We'll move on to Pete. Hi, Denise. I just <laughs> unmuted. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. Okay. Yeah, I know the Conservation Commission continues to be very busy. Uh, we have several open applications that we are reviewing right now. Uh, one is up at, at DA, it's an NOI for Four Little Meadow Road, um, which is the North Tennis Courts, um, which sit kind of behind the Deerfield Inn. And I have a site visit, um, or the commission has a site visit with them next week with the engineer, which is Ty and Bon. Take a look at that one but we've been discussing that for the last month or two. Um, another open one right now is what's called an ANRAD. It's over at 81 Stillwater Road. Um, and this is a determination or initial determination of the wetlands in the area. See if we agree <clears throat> with what their consultant came back with. Um, but the applicant is looking at opening a, a lavender farm uh, over there in that area. Um, so we're, uh, we've been working with the, uh, applicant and their consultant for probably the last two or three months. And, uh, that will continue for a while. That's a pretty big project. Actually, the other one we have open right now is an NOI. 
It's for map 103, parcel 7.1, which is up on Greenfield Road. Sorry, Tim, but just above your driveway, <laughs> right in that corner there. Um, and they have a NOI for a stream crossing and to build a bridge there. Um, and we've been reviewing that extensively over hmm, almost a year now and uh, working with DEP and with the applicant on that one. And um, so that one's going forward as well. Also been monitor monitoring projects at the uh, Deerfield Academy Dining Hall um, at Sunny Days on, on Greenfield Road, uh, the Eagle Brook Track and uh, Cumberland Farms. And Denise, before you ask, I haven't heard from Cumberland Farms yet of what their schedule yeah, is, but we're reaching out to find out. <laughs> right, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other project that'll start up this week is the coordination with the Mass DEP. Uh, the town received an administrative consent order um, for four locations that we worked on last year after the heavy rains. Um, via uh, emergency responses and um, locations there. One is west of Richards' Candy and that wetlands over on the other, on the uh, west side of uh, Greenfield Road, also on the same side, but west of Bittersweet down the way. And then Old Ferry Road, which is on the North Meadows uh, above uh, Old Deerfield and on Hawks Road. Um, and this was the uh, an order that we received from DEP uh, to remove uh, leftover fill uh, that was left in the wetlands area after we had to do a lot of work last fall in a, in a very f short time frame. Um, so I think the first project, which would be um, West of Bittersweet, will start this Wednesday. Uh, we're waiting for a couple of OKs, but we've been working with DEP very closely and very cooperatively um, to get this all all set and um, and also uh, you know Chief Pachorek who was the emergency uh, manager uh, DPW Chris um, the rest of the CONCOM Amy at Town Hall and the various town office people to get that going so that will probably proceed um, starting this week with most of the work uh, occurring on the other three areas uh, through the month of October so Okay. Wow. Um, yeah. Tim, Tim, and then Julie. Two quick things. Um, the Greenfield Road Bridge. It's not yeah. really the bailiwick, but do we know if the guy ever got a, a perk test? I I do not. Uh, from what I heard, when he bought the property, he thought he had a perk test, but the guy that the the person that perked it was not licensed. So I'm not sure where they sit on that, Tim. Okay. Uh, and the other thing is, um, <clears throat> I just noticed that with all the work that DA is doing around the dining hall, I was out watching a soccer game the other day and um, <clears throat> over near the tennis court, the, the closed in ones, there's a huge slope that's just been decimated. And the, <laughs> I was told that they're taking soil out, but then they're going to put soil back. And I don't know if that was anything that uh, Conscom had anything to do with. Down so, by the tennis courts, or so yeah. When you when you pull in, um, I don't know the names. Of that. I don't think it's Albany. It's when you. No, it's not Albany. It's another the, little side road. Yeah. Yeah, it's further down, uh, further up. I mean, yeah. When you pull in and you go towards the closed-in tennis courts, um, you look up the hill, and there's just like a, a whole gravel hillside now. Um, and uh, I just wondered what was, if you had anything to do with that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've been there many times this summer, um, and we we have a lot of erosion control stuff in place. We've asked them to mat it, and they've put the matting in, but they've been doing some pretty heavy construction or uh, infrastructure underneath, uh, which I I believe is going to be finalized pretty soon. Uh, but on that whole side bank, Tim, is they're actually going to install um, solar panels there. Uh, on that bank side with uh, different things that we negotiate with them to to maintain that bank. Mm -hmm. So we've been working with them um, a lot. Uh, actually, there's a few times I had some issues with what they were doing and um, they responded to that. And um, 
I need to get back up there again on my bike and take another qu closer look, but um, I think we're getting there. Okay, all right, Julie. For the consent order work, um, is it? So we were talking about this at Finance Committee a week ago or so, and we'll re revisit it again later um, for the warrant article for the town meeting. Um, and the question that came up was, are we, really, are we really sure of the scope? Is it super clear what needs to be done? It sounds like, yes, it sounds like DEP is working really closely with you. Um, do you have any comments on that as far as, like apparently we didn't know this when we did it the first time, otherwise we would have done it. So um, right. is, is it, I, I just, we wanted to make sure it was very clear that everybody knew what, that the communication was good and it was very clear what the scope of work was and whatever. Yeah, no. Uh... One response was, yeah, we've learned a lot <laughs> and we, we thought we were going to get to it. But uh, um, yes, we're working with the DEP and they've gave us, um, you know, pretty good detailed maps of exactly what has to be done and exactly where we have to take it down to um, for to bring it back into the uh, existing wetland area. So we have a pretty good idea. We won't know the actual amount of material until we kind of work in there. Mm -hmm. um, but we also got... Um, approval, um, not just from DEP, but through the uh, Wetlands Protection Act and through, through the regulations, uh, a lot of that material can be used in the agricultural fields, um, which are north of um, old old deer field. Um, so the, it's it's wonderful material. Um, and um, so a lot of it will be uh, put into reuse area as well. But I think we have a, a really That's good excellent. definition and also there'll be a person um, from DEP on site, probably two or three days a week uh, to help guide us through the process. So yeah, it, it's worked out really well, but I appreciate the question for sure. Excellent, thanks. Yeah. That's great, thanks more. Thanks Pete, you guys are really busy. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Hey, one other thing, and I know I did ask this, it's not an emergency, but just wondering um, if you ever had a chance to inquire over at VESH for their, the existing. We have never received any information from VESH at all um, of what they want to do. So um, I have not reached out to them, but yeah. I have never heard from them directly at all. I had well, heard over the last couple of years, over the last year, maybe. That things were going on that day, and I thought they should come to us, but I haven't heard anything. Well, nothing has happened. I mean, you know, they came through the planning board and they were supposed to, two years, they were supposed to build a parking lot, but then heard rumors that they want to put another building up. So we gave them a pass on doing the landscaping for a period of two years. And if not, I mean, that's going to, I don't know when that's coming up, maybe in the springtime. But in the meantime, they have a detention pond that is way overgrown, sort of like it is at Cumbies that they've just totally ignored. And so when they come back to us, I'm going to say, hey, take care of that before you can do this. Because at that time, I guess we just didn't realize um, no, because they want to put be another a... detention pond in. Yeah, no, that would be appreciated, Denise, if you hear from them yeah. or you know, send me a note on the side if you want me to reach out to them um, okay. to look at the detention pond. But there, yeah. are, there's definitely some, you know, we're watching that side of the road of, of right. where the water builds up um, and how it affects that that region of uh, Greenfield Road. So let me know and I'll, I'll follow up. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. I'll yeah. check with Amy too what the timeline is and then I'll, yeah. you know, I'll find, and then I'll get back in touch with you. Thanks. That's great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Anybody else have any questions of Peach? No? Okay, if not, I'll move on to Andrea. Hi, Open Space Committee met on September 9th. We, um, uh, we are supporting uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation grant application that they're making to the feds. Uh, we wrote a letter of um, of support for that. And I approached the planning board and asked the planning board to also write a letter of support, which did happen. And apparently the select board also wrote a letter of support, which is greatly appreciated. Um, DCR is planning to purchase two uh, parcels of land on Pecumtuck, 
which would completely link in with all the stuff that the Open Space Committee has been doing, uh, planning and hoping to do um, along the ridge. So we are very pleased with that. DCR is planning to, if they get the money, is planning to um, manage trails on that land. It will probably be able to link all the way to Sugarloaf and it will really nicely dovetail with uh, um, the trails that um, Open Space is hoping to create through grants from the Mass Trails um, uh, grants. Um, Lily, you already got it, your hand up. Go ahead. I do. When you say DCR. I beg your pardon. Department of Conservation and Recreation. Right. So um, um, many years ago, the town of Deerfield uh, ceded land at the very northern tip, right by the bridge to Greenfield, to DCR with their promise that they would develop it into a river access site. The Open Space no. Committee is aware of this. Okay, but I was gonna ask, nothing's ever happened. And since you're working with them. So the good news is that there is a new staffer at DCR who's been on working uh, there, I think about two years. He's met with us once. Um, he informed Julie uh, Caswell, the chair of Open Space, about this, uh, this grant for uh, grants for um, this land on, um, on Pecomtuck. So we're building a relationship. We're building a relationship. And our new uh, board member, uh, uh, committee member, uh, Chris Curtis is very much about river access, river access. So we are, um, we are aware of that. Don't worry, <laughs> I thank guess. You, thank you. I just, it's yes. so, it, not a lot of people actually know that that is. We know. No, no we know about that. Uh, we know that it is uh, choked with uh, poison ivy and we know um, who's who's been there. And so uh, that is definitely, finding river access is very important to the committee, especially with Chris Curtis on the, um, on the committee now. And so that, we will address that. We, um, you know, the committee, um, until Chris joined us, was really focused on Pecumtuck. Pecumtuck, we just, because, you know, we had limited resources, we had limited people, we had limited um, um, expertise. Chris has incredible expertise in water stuff. Uh, he's, um, he's started, uh, he's participating in the creation of the Deerfield uh, river watershed, uh, whatever, I don't know the, uh, the exact words, um, but it's, uh, uh, he's, they've created a, a whole nonprofit to try to get the Deerfield River declared a scenic river by the feds and all the money and activities that go along with that. So we are constantly talking in our meetings about where can we get access to the rivers, rivers. And so it, we're, it's, we are mindful of that. So please, please know that that's happening and that we um, hope that this relationship, especially being supportive of DCR, will in fact make them be supportive of us. So Thank that's, you. that is, that is uh, a big plan. Um, the Open Space Committee has um, encouraged and written a draft, at least of a warrant article to be presented at the uh, special town meeting about changing the coding of the land owned by the town for three or four parcels of land, which the town has owned since the night, three of them since the 1920s, one of them since the 1930s, to um, make them subject to Article 97 protection. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you will hear about that at the, um, at the, uh, special town meeting by saying that the land is protected under article 97 the land will be permanently protected and so when we write grant applications to mass trails etc we be, we will be able to say these parcels are permanently protected um, because mass trails does not want to give grant money for land that's not uh, and I, it, in some ways it's just kind of like a bookkeeping uh, uh, process because we've owned the land some of the land almost 100 years, but it's never been permanently protected. So 
that is uh, that is the plan for those things. Um, Andrea, what is yeah. the current code? What does the current code make the land? It makes it owned by you know it's it's held by the town of Deerfield. Okay. Uh, it's 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 code nine thirty, which means it's open land. It, uh, Tim, you may know better that what the description of what that number means, but basically it doesn't. The not we're changing it from code nine thirty to code nine thirty two. Nine thirty two allows conservation, i.e., protection, i.e., <laughs> um, permanent protection. That's the um, that's the difference in the um, in the coding. Right now, it's not doesn't include conservation. So the town has it under its, you know, in its pocket, as it were, but it can, it's not permanently protected. Julie, thank you. I seem to always have questions. Like you can finish, Andrea, and then I'll. Oh uh, no! So uh, um, I was uh, there. Is a couple more things that the uh, uh, open space committee is doing, but um, not not all that's uh, consequential for this for this group. Um, I am. Go, tasked with going to uh, to the finance committee meeting on September 25th, which is my husband's birthday, um, to talk about what this change in uh, the coding will be. And just so that everyone knows, the Open Space Committee has been trying to permanently protect this land for like a year and a half. We're on Plan D. We've tried so many different ways of protecting this land, and. Um, and we think this is the we think this is the answer. Article ninety seven. Okay, we've got Julie, we've got Jim, and then it looks like Pete has his hands up. So okay. Julie, go ahead. Um, so this we talked about this at finance committee also, and like you said, you'll be coming to talk to us on the twenty fifth about it. Um, and the the questions I think you've answered most of the questions, and we'll talk about it at finance committee about people were asking about like. What maintenance would be required? What you know, ongoing kind of thing. And it sounds like DCR is going to be spearheading the well, not, not with DCR um, open space. So, so, so the, the the maintenance of the land won't change. It's still owned by the select board. Yeah, but if you but, put in past, but the the one issue I think that's still out there, which you had in your report, was um, um, the cell tower. There's a cell tower on one. On Pecom Tech Rock. Is a property. Apparently, they own some part of that. Whoever has the the cell tower, it's not. It's that's my understanding. So that won't be impacted. Okay. I, I, There's like a in my opinion, and I think the finance committee will feel that, that we really need to figure that out before we can recommend <clears throat> approval of this, and we'll talk about it at finance committee. Go ahead, Christopher. You have a comment. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, so uh, Tim and I have been speaking with town council this week to get the warrant language nailed down. Um, and I, I certainly was, you know, I saw those cell towers and I had questions as well. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're going to get that language nailed down, I think, in time to be able to come to the finance committee and kind of clarify, you know, what the status of that property would be. Okay. Um, but I uh, just wanted to just add that in there real quick. Okay. okay, thanks. Okay, Jim and then Pete. Okay, well, mine was just a brief thing. Um, at the last finance meeting, there was some confusion among the members, including myself, because it seemed like the codes, the land use codes stated in the draft warrant article didn't match the land use codes on the state land use codes website. I, yes, I apologize. It's uh, we're changing from nine thirty to nine thirty two. Okay, but I mean, just just a heads up, make sure, you know. Yeah. So that we don't have to waste time getting it corrected before. Okay, Pete. Hi, Andrea. Just apologies, one not to get back to your last email. It's been crazy around here, but um, yeah, whatever. However, this goes with the um, the warrant in October and the meeting. But if the CONCOM needs to get back involved, just let me know. And I will be more responsive. Just wanted to say that. <laughs> not, not to worry. Okay. Wait, who else? Um, Mark, did you have your hand up? Oh, I did. Um, I'm, I'm just wrestling with whether or not I should bring this up in finance or here. But I, I guess the, the, the one of the questions that we also had in the finance committee was what the um, parcel numbers were. We, we saw it according to the assessor's map. 
um, in in the uh, article as it was written. But you know, if if we could get a little bit more specific with what that is, um, uh, like I tried looking at that on, on Access GIS, and um, you know, there wasn't a direct correlation between the assessor's number and what's uh, on GIS. Christopher. Mark, I'm I'm happy to send you just a map that shows those parcels, Mark. So yeah, I can send that to you. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Christopher. Okay. Um, okay. Anything else, Andrea? You all set? Anybody? Uh, else the, the the other thing just to mention is that the um, Open Space Committee has created a. Uh, we have several working groups, and one of them is going to be dealing with um, matters um, of of Indig of the indigenous peoples. I don't know how to say this. Um, we are going to, um, this group is going to start to think about how we, how open space impacts the indigenous population, indigenous history, et, et cetera, because we keep coming up against that. Um, early on, we talked about having a conservation restriction and um, a volunteer who occasionally attends our meetings kind of went ballistic over the word restriction. We had to say, that's the term of phrase, conservation restriction. That didn't mean that, um, that indigenous people would be restricted from using the um, Pocomtuck. So uh, so now we have a working, uh, working group that's gonna try to figure out how to talk about these issues better. Okay, Mark, do you have another question or is your hand? Yep. Uh, just one other question. Were there any talks of like a land acknowledgement or anything, perhaps? That could be part of this. Uh, okay. Work group. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Wow. Thanks, Andrea. It's a lot going on. Gosh. Okay. Let's see. Um, Julie. You probably guessed that we're reviewing the articles for the um the uh, uh, warrant for the town um, special town meeting. So that's what finance committee has been working on. We've gone through it once and um, we have two more meetings scheduled and we should um, be getting through the whole thing within the next couple of weeks. Um, so that's the focus of finance committee right now. Um, town building advisory is actually meeting tomorrow evening, I think. And we're gonna continue to work on um, the two things that we have been working on, which is the charter, well, it's not tomorrow, it's Wednesday. But anyways, um, the charter for the committee and then a 20-year um, look at buildings and um, building maintenance that, you know, big sort of capital level maintenance that's required um, with the hopes of coming up with some input and support for the CIPC. No, that's great, Julie. I, th I think that's sort of, um sort of intersects with the energy committee as well. You know, we were just talking, I think, you know, MA and I had, well, she, which she'll report on a little tour today with UMass students, but talking about the buildings, um, you know, Frontier School and possible solar on there and how we didn't have really great communication with them when they put their heating system in. So I think that's, it would be great to involve the energy committee. MA, do you have a comment? That was basically what I was going to say, but added to that, um, as we move forward with the climate leadership uh, community process, um, we hopefully, I, I talked to Chris Mason, um, or I, e I emailed with Chris Mason, who's DOER rep for us uh, for Western Mass, um, and he said that he doesn't think that we will, there will be a money available till 2025 for the road for the roadmap stuff but we will apply for that and then hopefully that will we can coordinate and provide some professional help it's not actually money to us it's professional help and mm -hmm. putting it together so we'll be in touch we'll keep in touch julie about that because hopefully we can help with that process great that's great it's only six months away emma <laughs> really so I have a question for you, Julie, with your finance hat on. Mm -hmm. Do you need, I know you uh, review all of the warrant articles. Do you need anything from the Senior Housing Committee on the warrant article about um, empowering the select board to convey the property? Or is that 
it's pretty. That's pretty. the only one we actually voted. So that's that's set. And what was the vote? Uh, we have, we we voted to support it, recommend it. Thank you so much. <laughs> I must like so just to throw my soapbox out there for a second. I'm definitely worried about the workload on the town, um, work, the the employees, the town employees. Um, and I'm wondering about all of these projects right on top of each other and whether that needs to be done in the next couple of months or whether we can let some other things settle out before we get to that. What you mean specifically the senior? The specifically senior, the senior housing. Okay, so uh, I think the other I mean, stuff is going to stop. Yeah, I'll get stuff. to senior housing in a minute, but just to look ahead a little bit, we're not putting out the RFP till February because Christine Medor suggested we wait that long, but we have to get the select board empowered to convey it so that right. we get the response. And and then it's not really on the town, it's on the developer um, after the developer's been selected. So yeah, in, the town has to figure out that RFP and what conditions they want in it and everything. Oh no, we're working right. on that. That's already, okay. so and we've been working with Christopher on that for a few months. And actually Christine Medor did the first pass for us. So that was awesome. And then we added a bunch of Deerfield stuff. And um we'll be getting we when with everything going on in town hall, we did tell Christopher we will pick this up after special town meeting. So we just need that warrant article so that we can move ahead afterward. And you no, know, the committee is writing the RFP and then it's gonna be reviewed by Christopher. It'll be reviewed by Christine Medora again to make sure it's all so we're I totally recognize the stress that those and Lately just said Christy Medor is um in the Mass Housing Authority. Oh, right. She's the one that we worked with on complete neighborhoods and she's wonderful. So um Tim, did you have a question? No, I was just gonna do what you did and say who is Christine Medor for those who <laughs> yep. don't know. Yeah. No, she she's she's great. She's terrific. Okay, great. So no other questions for Julie right now. Okay, how about Lily? Okay, um, so two hats. Uh, first hat, senior housing. Well, I just said a lot of it, didn't I? Um, the RFP is going to be put on hold until after the special town meeting to give the beleaguered Christopher a little breathing space because basically we've got the text all done, but um, we don't have the software to bring in all the attachments that to include the studies and studies and studies that we've done for the site. And so they'll be able to, he'll be able to put that, his team, hopefully he'll have somebody who can do it for him. We'll be able to bundle it all together. We'll do a final review with Christopher and then send it off to Christine to be reviewed, but she won't even look at it until after special town meeting anyway, until the town has approved the select board's ability to convey it. So the special town meeting warrant article is our biggie, and I'm very grateful to the finance committee for approving that. Um, then next steps will be to get it to Christine Medor. The uh, hope is to get it out in February. She recommended that we go for the spring uh, cycle, and that we so we get a lot more attention for it. We have hit a problem. Last April, um, I asked to have a contract signed with FERCOG that they would handle the RFP process to be an independent process outside of us. And that's in that what they do is they they do all the postings correctly. You know, you have to post it here, there and everywhere and put it in the newspaper. And, and then their address would be where all the RFPs come back to. And then we would have a committee that um, <clears throat> I'm going to try and get with a select board right after special town meeting to talk about creating a review committee that has uh, neighbors, builders, you know how, so we need, and, and people on the senior housing committee to review the proposals as they come back. Um, but Although it was supposed to be signed last April, apparently it, I don't know what happened, but um, 
I do not have a signed contract with FERCOG and now they're telling us that they don't have the resources to do that work. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was kind of a bad place to be, but um, I do have a line on someone who used to work at FERCOG and um, we'll see if maybe she will be an independent consultant for us. But also I'm gonna call FERCOG and say, look, we don't need it right now. We need it for February and see if that's doable. So that's that's where we're at. We're actually looking really good except for that. Um, CPC, Community Preservation Committee. Kathy Sylvester is kicking ass and taking no prisoners. <laughs> she is a really, um, she held our first ever public hearing only nine people showed up unfortunately but um at least people did come and it's up on uh youtube to see what is the community preservation committee what are the different categories what can be a project and and all that kind of stuff um we did uh unanimously support the 1888 building project with the understanding that everybody said this is exactly what the CPC money is meant to do for a town to support the rehabilitation and the revitalization of historic buildings. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, the We were trying to get a fillable PDF for the application, but apparently that didn't happen either. And somebody might be working on it now, but I think with everything that's going on in town hall, that's not gonna happen for this cycle because applications are due November 1st and it is not the most important thing to get done between now and then. Um, we are moving ahead with developing a CPC plan. And the purpose of the CPC plan is to outline the community priorities, especially when we have to deal with competing projects for a specific pot. And for example, um, I, th I think open space will be coming to us for some money. And I think I heard a rumor, though nothing direct, that the schools might be coming to us for um, playground money. Um, it would be really nice if the school committee would be <clears throat> coming to the CCI meetings. And so we wouldn't all be wondering what happening with 70% of our budgets. Um, anyway, you can't tell I'm cranky about that, can you? Anyway, um, so um, we're going to be developing a plan. And uh, I think we might end up using the Open Space Committee did a fantastic survey in 2021, I think it was, and actually asked about what are the priorities for people in town. And, and they actually had like the CPC categories in there. And so I, I think we may be relying on that a little bit. Um, so that's our next step. And then we're going to start reviewing applications as they come in through November 1st. That's a CPC. Thanks, Lily. Anybody have any questions, Lily? No? Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Jim, what's happening in the library land? Happening in library land. Well, Christopher told you that. The cool stuff. Um, so, I mean, we, we're doing some various fundraising activities. Um, and, you know, as far as I know, the building project is going along right on schedule. So that's all good. Um, uh, we've got some fundraising activities under either, you know, either scheduled or in the planning stages. Um, they're talking um, the, some of the local breweries into supporting a brew hop fundraiser um uh, a dance basically with um there's a pickleball tournament fundraiser to cash in on the huge amounts of money in pickleball <laughs> sorry every time i hear about pickleball i just have to keep a straight face um uh let's see um we are i believe scheduling still when to hold an online raffle for some wine donated by a certain select board member um and uh we're now trying to um get people who made pledges to actually cough up the money they pledged uh <laughs> now that the building is actually underway um 
uh, they changed the opening hours um, somewhat so that ever since the start of September, um, they're open on Friday afternoons now because everybody agreed that a place for kids after school uh, would be useful. Um, and they accommodated that by trimming back the Saturday hours because apparently Saturday afternoons were a completely dead time. So I think this, the net hours are the same. Um, let's see. Um, we have been spending a considerable amount of time putting together a policy for the community room, which is you know part of the new addition, so that when the building is completed, we will have a policy in place for who gets to use it and what you get to use it for and what do you have to do to to get it and all that. Um, basically, we're the the consensus was mostly we're going to be completely agnostic about who gets to use it, um, except that you can't use it to sell stuff, basically. Um, I mean, there's a, a much more, you know, there will be a more detailed and, you know, written out policy, but that's the, the bare bones of it. Um, and uh, otherwise, you know, we're all just watching the building go up. <laughs> Great. Okay, thanks, Jim. Anybody have any questions for Jim? Nope, oh, if not, I'll move on to Tim. So, uh, of course, I don't know if Christopher, sorry I was late. Um, we've been having trouble with our shared calendar and somehow CCI was not on our calendar for tonight. So, um, <laughs> Christopher may have mentioned the TA search we are um, officially up on Massachusetts Municipal Association. Um, we're looking for sister organizations in Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire to post um, the town administrator position. Um, we've talked about creating an ad hoc committee to do the initial screening of all the uh, people who are going to be sending us resumes and expressions of interest. Um, but we probably won't get to that stage until um, about the time Brenda comes back from her long, long awaited and deserved break. Um, she's very helpful on these committees. So, um, <clears throat> and uh, we've put it, we put an Oct October 4th submission deadline, but we will continue to take some, you know, submissions through through that period until we actually wean the crowd and actually make a selection. Um, so uh, <clears throat> that's that. The 18, the, the meeting house relish is um, the metal parts are actually in the, the old sanctuary side of the building. There are a couple of more that are still being fabricated, but I went in today to talk with um, the foreman from Sanaxo, who's basically uh, he was there alone today because he was just putting a uh, rust-oleum or some paint product that will protect the uh, steel uh, pieces that have been delivered. They, he told me that they will be in tomorrow. He needs more than one person because this stuff's pretty beefy. Um, and uh, so that's a good news thing. I don't know the timing on the exterior work that will have to be done after this is taking place, uh, the repairing the soffit and so on. But, um, you know, they're, they're on schedule to finish sometime in October. It looks like uh, anything can happen. Um, we have, uh, Eastern Ave and Graves are partially, uh, milled. Um, but there have been some, there've been some concerns about the milling creating its own set of problems with people's driveways being a you know eight eight or ten inches above the milled surface so they can't get in and out of their driveways so i'll bring that up with chris miller and see what what if anything temporarily can be done because i don't think the paving is supposed to actually kick in until the end the end of the month um so uh we will be talking about tree horse, tree house noise now that the concerts are over tomorrow night, I mean, Wednesday night. 
but really just sort of cursorily um, probably shouldn't have put it on the uh, agenda the way it was put on because people will be anxious to come and talk. And my thought is let's talk about how we talk about this. <laughs> so the idea is why don't we set up a listening session in advance of any public hearing that we might have, because we've got legal things to do uh, working with Lisa about, you know, what avenues we can pursue. Um, but it would be nice to hear from people both pro and con about their experiences with having treehouse concerts in town. Um, so that's something that I wanted to get the input from the rest of the board on to, on Wednesday. Um, but we will allow them to have comment at the beginning. You know, they could talk, tell us about it. Uh, so um, I try to stay off Deerfield now, but I did happen to click through and notice that that was another topic um, today. Mm -hmm. um, New Pro um, is in still interested in buying land, but um, with the recent term turnover, um, that's sort of slid to the side. Uh, we are picking that back up. Christopher and Greg Snedeker and I were conferring about how to move that question forward. The land has been appraised and apparently the DPW is no longer storing anything of real value there. So it re removes that as a concern for moving forward. I think, I think the select board has already approved um, declaring it surplus. So there would have to be a, a bid process designed. That was something that was in the works before Casey retired. Um, but there were some questions that she was sort of stuck on. So we'll work through those and uh, figure out um, whether it makes sense to convey the land. And then there's the, as um, Andrea mentioned, select board unanimously wrote a letter of support for DCR's plan to purchase two North Pine Nook and South Pine Nook forest tracts, which are largely forested and largely on steep banks, mountainside and, um, you know, so that's it. Although feel free to ask if you have any questions about other stuff. Thanks, Tim. I know you've been busy. <laughs> oh, final thing, yeah. The warrant, be, because, because the warrant has to be closed this week, we're gonna probably open it. Lisa had some uh, adjustments that needed to be made. She broke out, um, the open spaces, tracks of land into separate items. We're also, open spaces also agreed to um, hold back some land in this first step because we have to trade DCR land, I don't know, two to one or a three to one basis for the Stillwater Bid Bridge project. Um, and they're still in the process of determining how many acres, including underwater acres out to the middle of the Deerfield River, um, we need to pony up. Right. So to just to explain a little bit, uh, so there are four parcels of land that the town owns. Three of them are forested. One of them is um, on the shore of Deerfield River. Is on the you know is on the Deerfield River, and that's the one that's probably um, we're not as worried about. It might get swapped with some DC to DCR. Right, it's 5.5 .5 acres, it's the smallest parcel. Right. The only thing that might change whether we handle two or three, and I, Christopher's not here, so he can't speak to it, but is if it's unclear that we need, you know, if we need more than 5.5 .5 acres for some reason, mm -hmm. um, we might have to steal from another section. So I currently, I think that there's only two items, two tracks on the warrant, but, um, between now and Wednesday, when we have to reopen it, um, hopefully Lisa and Christopher will have worked out. Lili? Okay. So I admit to being rather confused about this. And I guess the question is on the warrant article, is that land swap a separate warrant article that's a part of the whole conversation? I, I don't really understand what's... So, Thank you. Parallel, parallel to this, and it's not on the warrant, is the Stillwater Bridge Project. 
there is DCR land there that we need to um, either acquire uh, from DCR, and then we need to replace more land somewhere else back to DCR. So we're not going to be prepared to do anything about the Stillwater Bridge, but we need to have land that we can pony up in a swap. That's my understanding. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Julie, did you have a question or? I, I did have a question. The, um, oh, just a quick comment. In reading on the Article 97 stuff, once you put something in Article 97, it's it, there are ways around it, but it's essentially in perpetuity. And if you need that land for something, you have to give them something else in trade. So is that related to the Stillwater Bridge thing? Is that the same kind of thing? It is, except the, you know the the land that we have currently is not in ninety seven. Apparently, it's in, you know, it's just town ownership. Right. So, but it can be used as DCR swap. Um, okay. Yeah. If, right. If it were already in ninety seven, then it wouldn't be. Yeah. It wouldn't be available. Yeah. Right. Um. My yeah. what my real question was was is there any news on the um. We have an interim highway superintendent. Uh, um, is there progress on finding a new one? I realize everything's in disarray right now, so no. Right, we need to we need to post that. There's also you know staffing question because I think that the the DPW is understaffed at the moment, and um, so I was having conversations with Christopher and Greg today about the okay. We need to resolve whatever DP issues there are, DPW issues there are with staffing. Um, parallel mm -hmm. to that, we need to, you know, probably start reviewing the work um, that Chris Miller has been doing. He's getting things done, but we also need to put the job out and let him be a candidate. Um, probably we're going to do that after we get a TA. Good. <laughs> and, um, you know, and so that's that's the, that's the plan as much as there is a plan. Yeah, there's pretty strong feeling on the town building advisory committee that we really need a person who's responsible for, for oversight of facilities. And there's actually one of the positions in the in the DPW um, has that in the in their pro problem description, not problem description, job, job description, um, but it's not it's not getting done, and um, yeah. it, it's important. And I think that buildings, our buildings, would be in better shape if we had somebody who was doing I agree. that role. I think, I think that we need to get to that. I think they 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 have eight staff members and two management positions, and then um, the uh, the financial administrator. Um, right. We need to get them fully staffed and we need to decide that if the person is dedicated to building maintenance, then that's what they're doing. They will do other jobs if there's no building maintenance, but their primary job should be doing the building maintenance work because you're right. Um, it's nice to have somebody who's supposed to do it, but if they don't do it, then it's like not having somebody. Not useful. Yeah. But thanks. That's a great uh, reminder. Thanks. Good point, Tim. <laughs> okay, great, thanks. Um, any other questions for Tim? If not, I'll move on to MA. Yes. Uh, all right. Um, we did receive the Green Communities Grant, $190,000 for insulation, weatherization, and um, building controls for the elementary school. And as soon as we have spent that money, which have, have, we don't have yet, but when we do, uh, we're coordinating with uh, um, Darius and Bill Hildreth on that. Um, and so uh, we, when, when we spent that money, we will immediately apply for another grant, very similar grant for Frontier. And we've basically done all the work, all the preliminary work to get that done. So, but that I'm sure won't happen till spring 
Uh, we were hoping to be able to do it this fall, but that's November and we don't have the money yet. So it's very unlikely it'll be spent by November. Um, um, we're hoping that the other towns will join in with the Frontier Project. Um, we're, we've been in communication with them before, but none of them have adopted uh, Frontier into their um, green communities designation. At least they hadn't last time we talked to them. So, but it's once we've we've done it, all the information has been collected. So all they have to do is get FERCOG to, you know, uh, do the equivalent. And all so it's a pretty simple project for them now that we've we've uh, adopted them into our <clears throat> green communities designation. So that's um, that's that. Um, Tim, do you have a question on that specific? I was just going to say that um, Darius was concerned about timing of the of the grants, and so yes. um, I put him in touch with Jean Bassetta, who is the awarding division director, right. and they're working with Christopher Dunn and um, to figure out the timing on it. Uh, but uh, she says that they're very flexible as long as there's progress being made. So Darius is a little more relieved that. The immediate pressure of trying to spend one hundred ninety thousand dollars is not going to hit them right now. Um, so no. they'll have time to think it, about it. And, and we've, I mean, that's how it's been with other grants. When you know something comes, you know, um, invariably something comes up which slows things down. And they've been really good about. So long as we communicate, they've been good about that. So um, uh, that that's good to know. Um, the other thing is and this has been a problem a little bit in the past, is we don't know who's responsible, especially with town hall being where it is, who's going to be responsible for overseeing this grant? Who's going to, you know, um, who's going to be sort of the clerk of the works or how that all happens. And um, it's not energy committee. We've, we're pretty much done. It needs to be somebody on staff or somebody you know, or 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 that that um, Darius slash Bill Hildreth are the ones who are responsible, and they know that that's the case. Um, there was some confusion in one of the other projects, so we just want to make sure that that gets conveyed properly and discussed properly, because obviously oversight is a huge part. And the town's been burned before without oversight on some of these grants. So, um, the energy committee, primarily me, uh, in this particular case, wants to do a presentation to the senior center. We haven't talked to Jennifer Romillard, but um, it, you know, in probably a little bit later on, definitely after special town meeting and all of that, um, to talk about the, um, and use somebody from the planning board and hopefully, and again, I ha we haven't talked about this, but Emily Gaylord from CET to talk about the loan program grant that the state has uh, for energy, a really, really good program um, for energy, uh, retrofits um, and um, and then CET is the concierge. So they take, they will take whoever wants to apply through the entire process. It becomes very easy. They, they um, will, will do that. And we want to talk about um, accessory dwellings, how that can, how these three projects connect both the loan program, accessory dwellings, and um, and people who are living in houses that uh, need work and can't they can't afford you know so that that maybe the heating system and the cooling system and all of those kinds of things and and maybe possibly even an accessory dwelling in some of the older houses in town can be coordinated. So that's something that we'd like to move forward on. Um, and. Uh, so I'm hoping to get Emily and Anne Buchanan 
uh, pulled into that process. Um, and then as Denise mentioned, Carolina um, Aragon from LARP, which is Landscape Architecture and Plan and Regional Planning at UMass. Uh, we met today with, what were there, six, seven students? I think six I didn't students. Know. Yeah, six something. students, whatever. Yeah. Anyhow, very, they're um, graduate students, se second year graduate students, and they're doing a studio, which is a seven week, they do sort of divide the, their classes up this way. It's a seven week project that they're going to be looking at how we can, uh, how they, the landscape, uh, play, you know, how they can integrate um, the transition to alternative energy uh, that the town is is looking for, solar, geothermal, all, and, and other things like that, and how they can, um, their, the student projects will be how they can integrate landscape design that can, uh, augment and highlight and you know help with communications with the, so that people in town you know realize these are happening and it's really positive and they look really great what else am i forgetting well but you know each of them i mean we took we took them through a tour around we told first told them about cci and about all the different projects and how we're all working together so th so that was really good and then we took them around to the elementary school, to Frontier, we went all around and talked about the various projects that we're working on. But we also pointed out they were talking, I think someone was talking, we were talking about the Bloody Brook. So each one of them may take on a different project or come up with something different. But we also talked about, um, let's see, the Bro Bloody Brook. We we're talking about the geothermal. So that seemed to interest one of them. And then I was also talking about the inordinate amount of pavement in South Deerfield and how some of that needs to be ripped up. So that that was pretty it's interesting. North Maine. Oh God, yeah. So I mean, it, it was great. I mean, it was a great group of students. Caroline is wonderful. And I think she'll be inviting, you know, we'll send out that invitation. I think it's, I don't remember. The 15th, the 15th of October. October 15th. At nine o'clock. Right. And, and they'll have all Yeah. Lily? Yeah, so um, for the purposes of the minutes, is it L-A-R-R-P? Is that what you said? L-A-L, Landscape Architecture and Regional Planning, LARP. L-A-R-R-P, okay, thank you. No, just, just one R. R. One A. One, one A. A. <laughs> God. At any rate, it was really good, and I think it's I think it's really interesting to you know this is the third time that we've worked with students from UMass, so you know you never know we may hit it big on you know working with them. They may come up with you know an amazing idea, you know who knows. But in the meantime, it was really it was really good to to do that. They're also um, working with the folks from the Energy Extension. Um, mm -hmm. And and I think that's partly because we've worked with that group before, and and that sort of encouraged them to do that. So that's also good. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we we were talking about you know, talking about considering um, the age of the community, and that forty five percent of residents are over the age of fifty five. Take that into consideration. Take into consideration politics, and um, also the communication. I mean, I think those are all key factors in whatever they're doing now and in the future. So <clears throat> that was fun. So anything else, M.A., with that? Um, also, I think because the Energy Committee hasn't had very much of a public presence, we're planning on doing a press release about the grant um, in the next week or so. Great. I think Good. that's everything. Um, and Tim, maybe we'll talk further about the oversight piece if if that is helpful as far as the yeah, grant I mean, goes. It, I think, yeah, I think it needs to be probably closer to the school than the town. Yeah, but, I do yeah. too. And but I, you know, yeah, the town I mean, is the town is still responsible for it. So oh, absolutely. I mean, overseeing it. They've so, said that yeah. I, I'm signing the initial documents 
accepting the grant. So that's just yeah. de facto. I didn't really want to do it, but um, nobody else available. So, um, but yeah, we'll definitely want to organize that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. I think that's okay. it for me. Okay. Thanks, Emma. So I think, okay, I've covered everyone. Okay. Just a couple things. Um, the both the 1888 and the open space land came before the planning board and we both did, we recommended both projects. So that's good. I think we're all sort of on the same page with that. And one thing, Tim, I did miss and Tim, Tim and Julie, I missed the last library building committee meeting. And I was talking to the OPM and he said, oh, the extension, the addition has gone back to white. Is that true? Okay. I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time since we talked about the color of the extension. So it's going to be white with like a stripe around. Remember, like it's sort of blocky looking, right? And there's small blocks top and bottom, and then there's a bunch of windows across the middle, kind of. And so it was okay. going to be a darker color on that same height as the windows carrying around. Okay. And everybody, like, everybody who's a professional architecture person, like the OPM and the architect and, oh gosh, I've lost her name. The woman who works with the architect, the, the designer, they were all hard over that it would be too busy. Like mm -hmm. if we had that stripe in it yeah. um, and they felt like it would just look a lot more simple and calm kind of if it were all one color. So it did go back to a, a white color. It's not like pure white. It's like a okay. white that picks up the color of the marble that's in the mm -hmm. um, building. So that okay. was the discussion. Okay, great. Thanks. I know that that that's you know, when we were at the uh, the 1888. I mean, people are sort of freaking out over the addition, you know, the addition of the 1888, 1888 being white. But you know, it seems really? like there's be sort of a pattern. I like it. But I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so, I like it too. I thought it was great. Because I, I kind of picks I up. Too. The, um, I, I, much, I really like it. Yeah. 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 I thought it looked like a seafood restaurant myself. I think. Uh, oh, really? I think also. Like a high end lobster shack. <laughs> it being a, a computer generated image, also, it doesn't look real. So True. it's difficult to read what it would look like in person versus. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it would, yeah, I guess it would be sort of nice, but probably difficult to have color swatches, you know, at the next meeting, or to say, you know, do, do you know how many shades of white there are? There are like 100 shades of white. It's not just one shade, you know, as Julie said, it's not stark yeah. whites. Anyway, okay, so that's it for me. Um, public comment, I don't think there is a public left. I think Blake left, so no comment. Um, is there any other business that we hasn't, haven't covered? Tim, hand up. I just wanted to say that at the next um, 1888 building informational meeting, I'm going to actually say at the beginning some things like, these are conceptual drawings, colors may change, um, you know, just to remind people, don't get fixated on one little thing and think that you should vote no because you don't like the white. Um, <laughs> this is a project that's going to be meaningful for the town in a lot of ways. And so let's focus on large questions that you need to have resolved and so yeah. hopefully and once it's built there's nothing to keep the town from repainting it <laughs> right and the other question i had is how do you pronounce it is it pedal pedal uh your your pete pedal name there's a very large <laughs> clan of indians who the patels so I just pete law i know at first i thought who is pedal Sorry, Tim. That's my uh, my secret name. I I shouldn't put it on the uh, public here tonight. It's Ooh. Pedal, not All Pete. Right. <laughs> okay, okay <laughs> Pedal. Yeah, you, you never should have told us that, Pete. You yeah, know, yeah, I know. There you go. Now. I think it's the uh, <laughs> truncation of Pete Law, but that's all you I, get. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking too. Okay, great. So let's um talk about the next meeting, which will not happen until after the special town meeting. It seems like um, Monday nights might be good, even though we've 
typically done Thursdays, but as long as it's not the first Monday, because that's planning board. Well, when there's not a holiday or two hot or thing, two things in a row. But let's see. Um, you can't do the seventh. You can't do the fourteenth in October because wait, seventh is t the meeting. The fourteenth is Indigenous Peoples Day. Twenty first. Andrew, do you do it on the 21st? That'll be nice. I'll be in France and I won't be here. Open, oh. sp oh. Open <laughs> Space is meeting on the 21st, yeah. 5 to 6.30. You know, Amy just said, or is the, oh no, that was November. Okay. Uh, we could do the 28th. Yeah, that works for me. And I'll be in France, so finally. Planning board. Oh, is planning yeah. board meeting that day or not? Rub it into him, okay? <laughs> no, I think, no. Shoot. No, planning board, I think, is now, didn't that get switched to the 28th? Uh, of September. It got moved back in September, right? Well, we've got to move October, too, because October 7th and 14th, we uh, can't. Okay, uh, so let me just, Amy just sent something today. Do you have that open, Andrea? Let me just check. Amy sent, yes, I think she said, how about the 28th? Did she say the 28th? Hold okay. on. Just find it. Oh man, I don't have the. No, she said uh, November eight. Said November. No, okay. oh, that's November. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we. November. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, we just we... wait a minute. We just had a meeting. Oh boy, when was our last meeting? Our last meeting was the. Uh... Was. <laughs> was the ninth. Oh, we're having it on the yeah, 30th, yeah. September 30th. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so. October 21st, are we back to that? I don't know what we're doing. Right. Is that what you just said? Well, you know what? We can just. We can set the meeting for the 28th, then it means the planning board has to meet on the 21st. Let's just set that. You want to? Oh, I thought we were doing the 21st. I'm confused. I don't, I don't care. We can do 21st or 28th. It's up to you guys. Either was the same for me. Anybody have a preference? I've got planning board as being on the 28th of you October. Do. Okay, thanks. Okay, so the 21st. 21st and uh, 6 30. October 21st at 6.30. I will send that out. And if there are any issues, I will let you know. Okay. 28th is the board. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Um, do I have a motion? I, yeah. <laughs> I moved the All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone.